Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be having an online lesson on electric potential and electric potential energy. So let's start off with the definition of the electric potential. This is a really, really important definition. So the electric potential at a point is defined as the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to a point. For instance, if I have this unit positive charge, which is in the vicinity of a sphere, those two are naturally going to repel because they're both positive. In order to bring this charge to a point on the sphere, what I need to do is I need to do some work. I need to apply a force and travel a certain distance. It is also worth pointing out that the electric potential is zero at infinity and also really, really important that the electric potential is a scalar quantity. Now, let's have a look at some parallels between the gravitational fields and the electric fields. Those two are incredibly similar. Let's start off with gravitational fields. First off, the force in gravitational fields is given by F is equal to minus GMM of R squared. In electric fields, the charge seems to play a very similar role in the equations compared to the mass in gravitational fields. We are already familiar with the equation for the force in the electric in, in electrostatics so we can just write this down that the force will be equal to the product of the two charges q q divided by a constant which is four pi epsilon naught and then r squared so those two equations are incredibly similar the energy is just the integral of the force with respect to distance um, if you haven't done calculus yet, you can kind of think about it that it's multiplied by the, by the distance, but it really is the integral of the force with respect to distance. So the energy in gravitational fields is minus gmm over r. Similarly, the energy in electric fields is given by q cubed over 4 pi epsilon naught r. One of the most common mistakes when dealing with gravitational force and energy and electric force and electrical energy is forgetting to square the distances in the force equations or squaring incorrectly the distances in the energy equations. So remember for um, the energy is minus gmm over r or qq over 4 pi epsilon naught r whereas the force is given by the product of the two charges divided by the constant divided by r squared. So this is really, really important. Okay, well, let's have a look at the gravitational potential. The gravitational potential, as you remember from a long time ago when we did gravitational fields, is given by the gravitational potential energy per unit mass. This leads us to an equation for the gravitational potential Vg. By the way, this is V subscript G. It's not V multiplied by G. I've seen that as a mistake a couple of times, so I really wanted to mention that. So the gravitational potential is equal to minus G M divided by R. Very, very similarly, the electric potential is given by the electric potential energy divided by the charge, so per unit charge. So the potential, in this case, I'm just going to say it's energy divided by charge. So essentially it will be this expression divided by Q, which will leave us an equation for the gravitational, for the, excuse me, for the electric potential being Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r, just like this. Those are the three equations that will allow us to solve essentially any problem within the 
ranges of the electrical force or electrical potential energy or the electric potential. Okay, folks, now what we're going to do is we're going to apply our equation for the electric potential in order to determine an equation for the capacitance of a sphere. Let's imagine a little charged sphere over here and let's say that it has a charged Q. If we start charging the sphere, for instance, this could be the sphere at the top of a Van der Graaff generator, and uh, we start giving it some charge, let's say it's positive, but uh, the sign of the charge almost doesn't matter in this case. Um, this sphere will act as a capacitor because it will be storing some electrical charge. Because of that, we can apply the equation Q is equal to C times V. And we can find the capacitance of that sphere, absolutely no problem. All we need to do is just rearrange for C. So C will be equal to Q divided by V. And however, now we know an equation for the potential at a point on the surface of that sphere. And let's say that the radius of that sphere is R, like so then we can just substitute and say that this will be equal to q over q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r like so we can see that the amount of charge is going to cancel so what we are left with is 1 over 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught r which um, if we essentially multiply by the inverse, which is how we divide by a fraction, is going to give us four pi epsilon naught r. And look at that, the actual capacitance of the sphere seems to only depend on the radius of the sphere, which is a really, really interesting result. I'm gonna write it down over here that c is equal to four pi epsilon naught r and it's really important to note that this result only applies for the capacitance of a sphere of radius r and not for an all parallel plate capacitor or other objects okay guys just one final note for today and that is that very often in exam questions we might be given a graph of force against distance. For instance, we could be given the electrical force that is acting on an ion uh, within a, um, against the separation of a different ion. Uh, we may be asked to determine the amount of potential energy in the system. Now, the important rule to remember is that, as always in physics, the area underneath the graph, so I'm just going to say this over here, the area underneath a force against distance graph is the work done. So this over here is the work done. So by estimating the area, we could estimate the work done on a charge and from that because work done is equal to our change in energy we could work out our electrical potential energy okay folks just to summarize we've done quite a lot of work today so uh, we looked at the definition of the electric potential and energy so remember the electric potential at a point is defined as the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity all the way to that point. We compared the two sets of equations, one for gravitational fields and one for electric fields. The force is given by QQ over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. The energy is given by QQ over 4 pi epsilon naught R. And the potential is the energy per unit charge, which is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R. Then we looked at the capacitance of a sphere and uh, we got the result that c is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught r so the capacitance of the sphere seems to depend only on the radius of the sphere really surprising result finally we reminded ourselves that in a force against distance graph the area underneath the graph is equal to the work done hopefully this makes sense and thank you very much for watching